In this video, we're going to look at some more comparison operators in Python. We're going to look at these. If you start a line in Python with a hash sign like this, or if you put that anywhere on a line in Python, whatever comes after it on that line is a comment. So you can use this hash symbol to add comments to your code. Some programmers go overboard with this, but it's probably much more common that programmers don't put enough comments into their code. As a beginner, you might feel like putting a lot of comments into your code or not. It's up to you. I would suggest in general that comments should be added to code in cases where you're writing a block of code and it's really not obvious what it does. So you maybe want to make a note to say what that code is supposed to be doing. But of course, you have to keep your comments up to date if you change the code. Otherwise, they'll get misleading. So let's take a look at these operators. We've already seen the equality test operator equals equals. We could write, for example, print. Let's try cat equals equals cat. Now, on the face of it, this looks useless. But of course, one or both of these strings would normally be a variable. So it wouldn't be obvious what the result is going to be. If I run this, since they're both string literals, of course, we get true. If I change one of them to something else, then we're going to get false. Pretty straightforward. And we've seen also that you can use this operator with integers. So if I write here 5 equals equals 6, what's that going to return? Well, this is going to evaluate to false. And so we print false. It's not a good idea to use equals equals with floating point values because floating point values are not stored precisely in the computer's memory. So you can get misleading results from doing that. With floating point values, the question you would want to be asking instead is, is this floating point value close to this other floating point value rather than asking if they're equal, which is not necessarily as meaningful as you might think under the circumstances here. But with integers equals equals works really well. We've also got less than, so we could write print five less than six. Well, that should be true, right? So it says true. And we've got greater than, so five greater than six. Of course, that's false. Now, a useful trick for remembering the difference between greater than and less than, if you're not used to them, they are found in mathematics as well, is, let's just zoom in a bit. If you look at these symbols, they both have a sort of big end to them and a small end, right? There's a big end, there's a small end. If the smaller value is at the smaller end and the bigger value is at the bigger end, then the whole thing evaluates to true. If it's the other way around, so in this case, you've got the smaller value at the big end and a bigger value at the small end, then these expressions evaluate to false. And you can see that works. We've got true and false. Here it's the right way around, so to speak. And here it's the wrong way around. Surprisingly, these also work with strings. So we could say print cat greater than dog. Of course, this is a topic that brings out strong opinions, but leaving that aside, is this going to be true or false? Let's run it and see. So it's false. Why? Well, this is basically doing an alphabetical comparison and dog occurs later in the alphabet than cat. So in a sense, dog is greater than cat here. On the other hand, watch what happens if I give dog a capital letter at the start. So we did get false, remember. Now we get true. Why is that? Well, strictly speaking, this isn't exactly an alphabetical comparison. In fact, every letter has a number in the Unicode table of characters. And it's using those numbers to do the comparison. You can find out what the numbers of letters are using the ORD function. 
Let's print ord. This is a built-in function. And let's try it on C. And we'll also try it on D. And what we find is that the number of C in the Unicode character set is 99, and the number of D is only 68. So if we go to a browser and we search for Unicode table or something like that, so we've got uh, a table at this site, unicode-table.com. It's pretty good. And we can see here that, in fact, the capital letters occur in this table before the lowercase letters which explains why the capital letters have lower numbers associated with them than the lowercase letters. So you can use less than and greater than with strings as well as with integers. We've also got not equals. So let's do print cat not equal to dog. Is that true or false? Well, it's true because a uh, cat, the text, is not equal to this text, dog. So we get true there. And we've got less than or equal to and greater than or equal to. Let's try, we'll try numbers this time. So five greater than or equal to six. Is that true or false? It's false. Five is not greater than six. It's also not equal to six, so this is false. Let's try five less than or equal to five. Is this true or false? Well, five is not less than five, but it is equal to five. So five less than or equal to five is actually true. And that comes back true. Now, what I'd suggest you do with these is as always, I don't recommend stressing about memorizing this stuff, but I do very strongly recommend trying it out. Try this out. Try out all of these operators with your own integers and strings. Check if they behave as you expect. And if you find anything unexpected, try to figure out why it doesn't work quite as you expect. You can always come back to this code right here. And if you're really unsure about this stuff, then a good way to start is just literally typing out this. It's really surprising how typing code out helps you become familiar with it. It's as if a lot of the learning really does take place in your fingers. I find that once I type code, it's then much easier to understand it after I've typed it. So try all these out for yourself. Don't stress about memorizing them. We're going to be using them as we go through the course, but definitely do try them out. Hello, you've been watching a free sample from my Python and machine learning for complete beginners course. I'm uploading enough videos from the start of the course to get you started with Python and machine learning. The full course is absolutely massive. If you're interested in it, please click the link in the description. The complete course covers not only basic Python, but also some fairly advanced Python, even some desktop programming stuff, and then goes on to machine learning and artificial intelligence. Until next time, happy coding.